First, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I declare open the 26th session of the Commission on Science and Technology for Development and call to order its first meeting. Let me start by expressing my appreciation to all member states for having elected me as chair of the 26th session. The election took place through a silence procedure that ended on March the 3rd, 2023. Ex Excellencies, distinguished delegates, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure for me to welcome you on the opening session of the 26th annual session of the United Nations Commission on Science and Technology for Development, CSTD. It is an honor to see a high level of participation for various parts of the world. Over the next five days, the annual session will address some pressing issues in the areas of science, technology, and innovation. In particular, we will consider two priority teams where the high level panel will convene on Tuesday. The first is dedicated to technology and innovation for cleaner and more productive and competitive production. The second is on ensuring safe water and sanitation for all, a solution through science, technology, and innovation. On Wednesday morning, we will launch the Science, Technology, and Innovation Policy Review Report of Angola and Botswana and the Technology Foresight Report for Botswana Highlights of technical cooperation activities under the CSTD will follow the session. On Wednesday afternoon, the annual session will also review the progress made in the implementation of the World Summit on the Informa Information Society, WISE's outcomes. Thereafter, we will have a presentation of the roadmap for the WISE's plus 20 review. Consultation on the two CSTD resolutions will be conducted on Thursday and on Friday morning, followed by the closing plenary of the 26th CSTD in the afternoon. After this opening session, I am pleased to announce that we will hold a special event called a conversation with great minds. This year's edition will feature a conversation with highly distinguished academic scholars at the intersection of science, technology, innovation, and socioeconomic development. Registered participants of the 26th CSTD annual session who join remotely can stay on this Zoom call. The event will also be streamed live on the UN Web TV. The information on how to access the live stream can be found on the CSTD website or on the flyer that was circulated. In the afternoon, I invite you to attend the high-level roundtable on the role of science, technology, and innovation in accelerating the recovery from the coronavirus disease, COVID-19, and the full implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development at all levels. This will be the contribution of the Commission to the team of the 2023 Economic and Social Council and the High Level Political for Forum on Sustainable Development. I will also like to inform you that there will be a number of site events taking place before or after the main sessions. For more information, I invite you to consult the program of the annual session. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, since the last session, the 25th CSTD, this commission has been engaged in cooperation activities in several other fora. I am thankful to Mr. Mansour al Qurashi for representing the CSTD in his capacity as the acting chairman of the 26th Commission and contributing to the work of several bodies of the UN, which is precisely the function that our commission is expected to play, given its cross-cutting mandate on technology. The CSTD has been proactively building alliances with other actors of the international system. For example, 
the acting the acting chair briefed the COSOC management segment in July 2022 on the outcomes and recommendations of the 25th, 25th session of the CSTD. Mr. Al Qurashi also spoke at the ECOSOC coordination segment at the beginning of February 2023. He highlighted the work that the Commission has been doing on our priority, priority teams in preparation of this 26th session of the CSTD. He also referred to the possible contribution of the CSTD to the global digital comp. Lastly, the acting chair spoke at the 61st annual session of the Commission for Social Development in early February, where the CSTD Secretariat and CSOD Secretariat co-organized a site event on the impact of frontier technologies on employment, inclusive development, and international cooperation. After having been elected as chair of the CSTD in early March, I was invited to deliver this, the CSTD message on gender and technology at the interactive di dialogue with youth representation at the 67th Commission on the Status of Women on third, March the 13th. I am glad to see that both the chair of the COSOD and the CSW will participate in the 26th session of the CSTD. The CSTD has always provided an excellent opportunity to deliver on important outcomes and forge partnerships in key areas of for science and technology innovation action in support of the achievements of SDGs. The Commission continues to serve its member states through thick and thin, and thin, as we have seen over the years of the COVID-19 pandemic and the rapid changes of techno technological advancement. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, I thank all member states and international organizations for providing inputs to the priority teams. The WISIS review and their interventions during last October's intersectional panel of the CSTD. They greatly helped the preparation of the respective Secretary General's reports. The Commission indeed serves as an excellent mechanism for sharing experiences and lessons learned to enable STI policies to be advanced for sustainable development. Before concluding, allow me some personal remarks. Science, technology, and innovation have always been the fundamental pillars for the development of our nations. But now, advances in technology are dramatically transforming the way people live, the way states govern, and how power is exerted in the international sphere, and challenging our values and our ethics. Innovation is the main source of power in the 21st century. These advances include, of course, a fierce high-tech competition among the main powers, focus on innovating faster and better, as well as taking adv advantage of artificial intelligence, quantum uh, computing, semiconductors, synthetic bi biology, and digital surveillance. Particularly, artificial intelligence provides a platform for continuous scientific and technological innovation, leading to yet more innovation. This, a key, this is a key characteristic that was not found in the past technological revolutions. In the meantime, huge gaps remain across the developing world. There is no certainty that alternatives to today's dominant traditional technologies will be deployed on the scale and in the, time, in the time frame necessary to avoid some of the most troubling consequences of the world's current crisis involving climate change, food insecurity, and digital marginalization. Developing countries like mine urgently need to have access to green fertilizers and to alternative energy sources, as well as tools to rapidly reverse the digital division. We need a strong and efficient public policies in association with the private sector and civil society, as well as international partnerships and cooperation. In this 
context, our task in this commission is to help and provide guidance to our government to put science and technology, and technology to work in favor of a more human, inclusive, and balanced, and balanced socioeconomic development. Our task should be not to lose this perspective. As UN De Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohammed correctly stated, we are in this together, so one will ever be truly safe until everyone is safe. I, I look forward to your active engagement in these deliberations for a productive and fruitful annual session. Let's turn to item one of agenda. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, I invite the commission to consider the provisional agenda and organization of work for its 26th session. The provisional agenda of this session is contained in document ECN 16-2023-1 and is available in the six United Nations languages. The provisional agenda and documentation for the 26th session of the commission were approved by the Economic and Social Council in its decision 20, 22, 314, 40 of 25, 21st July, 2022. May I take it that the commission wishes to adopt the provisional agenda? Okay. You see something there, something there, okay. <laughs> I see no objections. It is so decided. Distinguished delegates, it is now my great pleasure to invite the Secretary General of the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, Ms. Rebecca Greenspan, to make her opening remarks. Madam Greenspan, you have the floor. His Excellency Luis Chukwada Chil, Chair of the CSTD, dear Chair, Dear Mrs. Doreen Bogdan Martin, Secretary General of ITU, thank you, Doreen, for being here with us. Mrs. Shamika Sudinami, Director of Technology and Logistics of ANCTAT, ministers and vice ministers, dear ambassadors, delegates, and representatives of different organizations, dear scholars, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends. It is an honor and a privilege to extend a warm welcome to all of you attending the 26th annual session of the Commission on Science and Technology for Development. We gather at a critical juncture in human history, a moment filled with global challenges, but also brimming with technological possibilities. In this juncture, the Commission is more important than ever. Cascading crises and systemic shocks has left developing countries with increasing debt, stagnating growth, and limited resources to cope. Our goals for a sustainable future are in jeopardy, as overall human progress has declined for two years in a row. In this situation, science, technology, and innovation are becoming not just the best, best path forward, but perhaps the only one. The solution to these overwhelming economic, social, and environmental issues lies in coordinated, united global action. Efforts within individual countries, while absolutely necessary, won't be enough. We urge nations to work together using this commission as a platform for learning from each other and fostering a shared understanding of how science, technology, and innovation can promote sustainable development. This week's discussions should serve as a foundation for global cooperation in support of a sustainable future and should offer valuable insights for upcoming high-level events, like the SDG Summit, the UN General Assembly, and the Summit of the Future. The CSTD 
and these high level events must bring hope and practical solutions to a world under great strain. The 26th session of the CSTD is crucial for facilitating international discussions on these key global issues. Accelerating economic recovery, bridging the digital divide, promoting low carbon productive diversification, finding innovative solutions for water and sanitation, making technological profit, uh, technological progress for the benefit of all and not a few. The innovations and collaborative research that led us to develop vaccines and therapeutics for COVID-19 in record time show that we can find solutions to pressing global challenges when we work together at scale. To contribute to these important discussions, we will present our 2023 Technology and Innovation Report tomorrow, which identifies key opportunities for developing countries to use innovation for sustainable growth. The report shows that the market for cutting edge technologies is expected to grow sevenfold in the next seven years increasing from $1.5 trillion today to over $10 trillion in 2030. This presents enormous potential for the Global South and requires countries to act quickly, collaborate internationally, and nurture a culture of innovation. During, uh, during our presentation tomorrow, we will elaborate more in detail what practical solutions countries can take to seize these transformative windows of opportunity before it is too late. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, let us seize this unprecedented moment in history. Harness the power of science technology and innovation, and join hands in international cooperation to overcome our shared challenges, build a sustainable future that will be inclusive of all, leaving no one behind, and ensure that no nation is left behind in the global quest for progress and prosperity. I thank you all. I thank the Secretary General for her very important, important statement. I now invite our distinguished guests to make their special address to the CSTD. I have the pleasure to invite Her Excellency, Ms. La Cesara Estueva, Ms. President of the Economic and Social Council and Ambassador and Permanent Representative for Bulgaria to the United Nations in New York. Excellency, you have the floor. Excellencies, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure for me to address the 26th annual session of the United Nations Commission on Science and Technology for Development. As the focal point in the United Nations System for Science, Technology, and Innovation for Development, the Commission's role is pivotal in promoting the use of science, technology, and innovation to advance the implementation of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Your advice on how science, technology, and innovation can help the world respond to the multiple crises that confront us today is indispensable to the ECOSOC's own guidance to member states. The world continues to face serious challenges on climate and water. Your discussions this week on technologies and innovation to cleaner, more productive and competitive production and the role of STI in providing access to water and sanitation are important contributions towards the review of SDG 6 and SDG 9. 
your focus on the distribution and delivery of safe water and sanitation and addressing inequalities in relation to gender are also relevant for the UN Water Conference and this year's session of the Commission on the Status of Women, which is concluded. These two SDGs are key enablers that can catalyze economic growth while addressing the existential threat of climate change and making sure to leave no one behind. SDG 5 is critical for the realization of all SDGs. The proceedings of the Commission will also provide an important input to the high-level political forum on sustainable development as SDG 6 and SDG 9 are under review in July. As we reach the midpoint of our journey towards 2030, your contributions will also be relevant for the SDG Summit in September. These two events will be important opportunities to promote multilateral cooperation to take decisive action to advance the implementation of the 2030 Agenda. Your discussions will also continue to provide valuable inputs to global processes such as the World Summit on Information Society as we approach the 20th year milestone. There are many lessons to be learned from the WISIS process for our future efforts to create a people-centered, inclusive and development-oriented information society. Let me take this opportunity to call on all stakeholders to fully exploit the knowledge and expertise on digitalization in the Commission. Your contribution will be indispensable for the ongoing discussions on the Global Digital Compact in preparation for the Summit of the Future. The work of the Commission and the work of the STI Forum are closely interconnected. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to conclude by expressing my great appreciation for the valuable contributions of the Commission to the review of the work of the ECOSOC Functional Commissions and Expert Bodies that I had the honor to lead during the 2022 session. I'm especially grateful to the Commission Bureau for the thorough conduct of the process and for assuring business continuity, which will certainly promote the implementation of the recommendations of the review. I'm encouraged to see that the Commission continues to strengthen its collaboration with other functional commissions, such as the Commission on the Status of Women and the Commission for Social Development. I also welcome the spirit of collaboration and development of the synergies between the Commission and the STI Forum. The recommendations aim to promote the effectiveness of the work of ECOSOC's functional commission and expert bodies. They will increase the efficiency of the Council itself and thus make a major contribution to strengthen our capacity to respond to global challenges and achieve the SDGs. I wish you fruitful discussions and look forward to receiving the outcomes of your deliberations. Thank you. I thank Ambassador Stoeva for her important remarks. I now have the pleasure to invite Ms. Doreen Botkan Martin, Secretary General of the International Telecommunications Union, to address the Commission. You have the floor, Madam. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, and congratulations on your appointment. Felicitaciones. Madam Secretary General, Madam President of ECOSOC, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, it's, a, it's an honor to be able to address this Commission on Science and Technology for Development uh, for the first time as ITU's Secretary General. As some of you, I think, uh, I think know, I grew up in a, a science-loving family, and I have always had a uh, a passion uh, and a deep respect for science uh, since a, a very early age. Uh, I quickly saw the promise of technology uh, as a promise to change the world for better. I think we see this reflected in the two priority themes of the commission this year. Uh, I think we also see that in the report that was released by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change earlier last week, and of course in the outcomes of the recently concluded WISIS Forum that ended the week before last, uh, and, and the list goes on. What this shows is that technological innovation is at the top of global agendas. 
Digital technology was in great focus uh, earlier this month at the fifth least developed countries conference that took place in Doha. Uh, in the outcome document, which was 91 pages, there were more than 70 references to digital. Uh, and of course, we've heard several references this morning already to the Commission on the Status of Women, uh, and it's terrific that the chair will also be participating in this session of CSTD. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that there are several big steps that we can actually take right now to close digital divides uh, between and within countries to bring meaningful connectivity to everyone everywhere and to use digital transformation as recognized in the conclusions of this year's Commission on the Status of Women to drive breakthrough progress and new solutions towards achieving the sustainable development goals. These solutions will require dialogue, which is why we're here. They will also require partnerships. They will require collaboration amongst different stakeholders and, of course, on a global scale. And I think that's been the strength of the WISIS process. We've heard that mentioned already, uh, the WISIS process for 20, 20 years um, since, it, since it started. Uh, this year, again, the WISIS forum brought together some 2,700 participants physically and also virtually. Uh, we had about 150 countries that joined, uh, ministers, ambassadors, mayors, entrepreneurs, tech innovators, civil society leaders, and many, many others. The WISIS addressed a wide range of topics, including space, uh, which I think is an area of potential action that has been outlined in the agenda for next year's Summit of the Future. Uh, and I also think it's an area that can offer tremendous potential when we think about global connectivity. Uh, and of course, we need to ensure sustainability and ITU is excited to be contributing to the efforts linked to space. The WISIS participants, and I think it's fair to say all of you, uh, are driven by the same purpose, and that purpose is to harness the power of digital technologies to rescue the sustainable development goals, because failure is not an option. Not when 2.7 billion people around the world are offline. Not when two-thirds of the population in least developed countries, a majority of which are women live in digital darkness. Not when cost remains a major obstacle to internet access, especially in low income economies, and especially not when the most vulnerable among us are being hit the hardest. So as we approach the WISIS plus 20 review and we look to the future of WISIS beyond 2025, it's important to reflect on the progress that we have made thus far, the WISIS process, the WISIS action lines do provide a well-functioning framework to accelerate and achieve the SDGs. And this global platform continues to evolve, reflecting, I think, the scope, reflecting the pace, the complexity, and the impact of today's digital transformation. Equally important is how we use this moment to identify areas where we need further action and that we can make a difference together. I think that's something that the Secretary General has, has already emphasized. WISIS stakeholders had an opportunity at the recently concluded forum to also inform the consultative process around the Global Digital Compact. Uh, we met with the UNSG's tech envoy. We had the pleasure of welcoming the co-facilitators of the Global Digital Compact from Rwanda and from Sweden. And I'm pleased to see that that is also an agenda item uh, for your discussions this week. Uh, ITU, of course, is working closely uh, to support this effort in the run-up to the, the Summit of the Futures next year. Ladies and gentlemen, there were only about 10 million internet users, 34 million mobile subscriptions, and over 600 million fixed telephone lines when this commission met for the first time almost exactly 30 years ago on a day 
in April in New York. That month here in Geneva, as the World Wide Web accounted just for 1% of internet traffic, CERN put the World Wide Web software in the public domain. And that was a move that would change the face of the internet forever. A lot has changed since then, but CSTD has continued to provide a platform to address the challenges as well as the opportunities presented by rapid technological development and to ensure that no one is left behind. This September, during the General Assembly High Level Week, countries will gather in New York, this time to follow up and review the implementation of the SDGs at the SDG Summit. ITU is partnering with others, including WISIS stakeholders, CSTD stakeholders, to organize a digital day prior to the SDG Summit so that we can actually showcase digital-based solutions with game-changing potential for the SDGs and mobilize renewed commitments from stakeholders through the ITU-led Partner to Connect Coalition. Why? Because time is of the, time is of the essence. We have only a few years left to achieve those SDGs and to achieve that promise of leaving no one behind. The WISIS process, together with our common agenda, will help to ensure that we stay on course, that all voices are heard, that digital technology stays at the top of global agendas, that progress is made so that the SDGs be become real in the lives of people everywhere. Thank you very much. I thank the Secretary General of ITU for her important, important statement. And now uh, I open the floor for any intervention of delegates or representative after this initial uh, session of the our 26th session of CSTD. I see no delegations uh, want to take the, the floor. So in this case, uh, we're uh, closing this uh, initial session of our uh, event. And uh, I call you all at 12 o'clock to in, in begin the conversation with great minds. Sorry, 11.30, 11.30.